Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Today we are looking at a very interesting project for the Godot game engine. It is called Dialogic, and this was just released uh, late last week. And what this is all about is an open source project for enabling you to do conversations and dialogues in your Godot powered game. And it is a pretty powerful tool as we are just about to see. Now it's available up on GitHub, it's under the MIT open source license. And we will come back to this webpage in just a few minutes. I'm gonna do mostly a hands-on presentation here. So so if you want to get Dialogic up and going, what you want to do is come to this repository. Again, it is available right here. I will link that in the linked article down below. So don't worry about that one too much. Uh, but go to the releases right here. And you're going to have to scroll on down, 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 and grab the zip file right here. Once you have that zip file, you're going to want to go ahead and create a new project. So we'll do that right now. Of course, that goes in my temp folder because where else would it go? And we will call this one Dialogic YouTube Demo. All right, create that folder and create our project. We're halfway there. So now what we gotta do is somewhere in our project, we'll go ahead and click the res folder and we'll open the file manager. We're going to be creating a new directory here called add-ons. Now what you wanna do, download that zip file I talked about earlier on. It is available right here. Navigate into it until you find the add-ons directory. Copy that folder and then go back to your newly created project and paste it. Oops, that was not paste, that was paste. All right, so once we pasted it in, we are like nine tenths of the way there. Uh, so there you now have an add-ons folder inside of it. You've got Dialogic, so you head on up here. Now, by the way, there's also in the future, you should be able to grab it this way, asset lib and Dialogic. And you search for that and you will find it. Unfortunately, what you will see is this is version 0.9, we were dealing with 1.0. So the version in the asset lib is always going to be slightly out of date because it takes longer to commit up there. So now that we've got that in here, go to our project, go to our project settings, go to plugins, it will automatically detect Dialogic, and we'll hit enable. Now notice this space right here, we click enable, and now we have a new Dialogic category. All right, we'll go ahead and close that. We'll create a new scene. This is my super scene, we'll save our scene. And we'll save that as super scene.tscn. Doesn't matter what kind of scene it is, it is now loaded. So here is our project. And now we can start using Dialogic. It is all configured. There is one setting for the entire project and you get to it by using Dialogic right here. Now you're gonna notice on my setup that some of these things are a little squeezed and that is sadly because I am running at 4K with DPI scaling and this project doesn't seem to handle it well. So it makes some of the dialogues look a little bit ugly. If you wanna go ahead and fix that, it's, it's fairly simple. What you do basically is go into the add-ons folder, Dialogic, and then you can basically find uh, the main thing here is all under editor. So each one of these editors, the editor view is the first one. It's this .tscn file. The cool thing is this is a project created in Godot. So here you can see the initial. So what we just want to do is grab that guy and we will set its minimum size to double what it is now. So 360 and we can just save that. And then we can do the same thing. We're also going to find under, uh, it was timeline editor. All right, so we're gonna open that guy up as well. All right, so so this folder over here, this this timeline right here, which is this scroll container over here, just do the same thing. Set the minimum size to double. Hopefully the author can fix this so that it works well on 4K or high DPI displays, which are becoming more and more common. But if you need to re re -size, resize the various different controls, you will notice this entire project is implemented just as um, a Godot project inside a Godot. Unfortunately for it to commit, I do believe I have to quit out. So we'll go ahead and save that guy and we will open it back up. So this should automatically load our project and it should now work better at our resolution. Let's open up Super Scene. All right, there we go. Let's go to Dialogic. And now you see we have a bit more space, which is nice. Now let's go ahead and we'll maximize this guy out because this is where we're gonna be doing most of our work. Now you've got a number of different options here. You can create timelines, characters, definitions, and themes. Let's start by creating a character. Each one of these corresponding things is available through the icons right here. Let's create a new character. And this first character is Bob Dole. And you can go ahead, you can set a color for Bob Dole. Like so, you can you can set a description. This is Bob Dole. So this is how you populate the NPCs in your world. Uh, you can give a icon to that character, which I will go ahead and do right there. Uh, so that is Bob Dole. We're gonna create another character here. We'll we'll make Laura. Let's, let's make this one Satan. And Satan is well, red was used. So we'll make Satan blue. And he is. I am not Bob Dole. Bob Dole is Bob Dole. And give him an icon. There we go. So he's got his own picture as well. 
I think this graphic may be the most overused icon in the history of the world. All right, so here we go. We got our two characters, Satan and Bob Dole. Uh, now what we can do, uh, we can create a definitions. This is something that we don't really need right now, but you can create a variety of different variables here. We're not going to touch on that one. Instead, what we're going to do in the heart of your world, all of these, these dialogues or dialogic things, they are timelines. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new timeline, and we'll call this one Conversation with Satan. Actually, we'll go with Stan. I think that's kind of funny. All right, so there we go. Stan's in here, and then here's all of our various different options for the world. So we're going to start here a text. So right away, we're going to have one of the characters speak right here. We'll pick it Bob Dole, and it'll say, What's up, Satan? And then Satan will reply. Go back over here. So we'll do another text event, and we will pick the character there, and we'll pick Satan. And Satan will say, What's up, Bob? Just chilling. Be having a bud. All right. Oh, didn't mean to press enter, so we'll go back to a single line. Having that you there kind of bothers me. All right, and then we'll do one more text event, whereas Bob will respond, true, true. All right, there we go. So that is very simple. It's going to be just a straightforward conversation between the two of them where we've got Bob Dole talking to Satan and Satan responding back to Bob Dole. Uh, once we are done with that, we can go ahead and save that out. We're good here. So now let's go over to our project and show you how to use a dialogic scene, which is pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and add a script to this guy. All right. Defaults all look good. Let's get everything from there on out. And what we want to do is do var dialog equals dialogic dot start. And then we just pass in the name of our timeline. Uh, what did I call this guy? Uh, conversation with Satan. Okay, let's go back here. Conversation with... Did I call it Stan? I stand it, didn't I? Conversation with Stan. Yeah, okay, that was on me. So, conversation with Stan, like so. And dialogue dot... No, no, I think that's all I need to do. Oh, no, so now I go add child dialogue. So now we're just basically we're creating a new dialogic conversation and we are adding it to our theme. So go ahead and or sorry, our scene. I'll go ahead and run that. And yep, that's our default. Go ahead. Here we go. So we got Bob Dole. Hey, what's up, Satan? And we click here to go continue forward or we do the action key. And then Satan responds back, what's up, Bob? Just chilling, be having a bud. And then finally, Bob replies back, true, true. And we are done. Now, if you want to customize the look of everything we just saw there, that's how easy it is to add dialogues into your world. But there's a lot more power at play here. We'll go back here to dialogue, Dialogic, and we'll show you a couple of the other options here. So we can go here. We can now have a question being asked. So um, what is your favorite color? And then the answer are blue or pizza. All right, so there we go. We got branching questions in there, and then we can start doing conditions based off of which one they choose. So if they chose blue, uh, actually, we'll do it on pizza. So there, they chose pizza. So now we'll do another text event, and we'll pop that in there, and then we can just grab it and drag it under the pizza choice, and we'll do a response of, you're an idiot. That's not a color. All right, and you're gonna notice we have a number of different other objects down here. We've got branching values that we can do. We can have character join in and leave out of the conversation. You can pick where they are in the slot. You can have multiple different characters in the conversation. Uh, we could switch to a completely different timeline. So if we had it branch, we could do multiple different timelines and branch between them. We can actually trigger off C's event. And then let's say at the very end of this, we wanna shut everything down. We'll do a closed dialog. We'll put that at the end there and that will close it all down. And we can also play some music or play some background music at various different points in here. And the even cooler thing is you can actually emit out Godot signals. So all kinds of things. If you're new to Godot, everything in Godot, including like a node 2D here, if we come down over here, you'll notice signals. So you got all these different events that happen, all different kinds of things. So for example, if I drop a sprite here, let's, let's abuse our, uh, our icon some more. You'll notice here this particular icon or the sprite has other... Um, signals attached. Well, you can actually, from Dialogic, you can actually trigger off 
any signal you wish, which is really kind of cool. You just basically just put the, the, the node name and the signal name in the code and it will fire that one off. Gives you a lot of power and flexibility of what you can do here. Uh, you can also change variables. So you can set variable values here and have them uh, run and commit and change. So if you had, um, if you wanted to say, reduce a person's reputation or you were doing a um, sales thing and you wanted to take away their gold but give them an item, you can actually run that kind of logic right here in this guy. So there's a lot of power of what you can do here. So with our new example set up, let's go ahead and run this. So now we're going to see, uh, what's up Satan? What's up Bob? True, true. What is your favorite color? And then you got a choice and we'll go ahead and choose pizza. And it says, you're an idiot. That's not a color. And then we close the dialogue down. And that is, as, that is as easy as dialogue it gets. It's a really cool and powerful tool for creating these kind of conversation things. Now you may have noticed in everything I was just working with that there's a lot of decisions made for you on how things look. Well, that is where themes come in. So let's go ahead and create a theme. And here you can see, you can set up various different themes and you can control. Now the the layering of this guy doesn't look great on this display. It scrolls and so on. Once again, this comes down to uh, 4K, I think. If you run this on a non-high DPI monitor, it looks a little bit better. Uh, so you can change the font that is displayed, all the various different values for the text. You can change how the character names show up. You can change how the uh, dialog box shows. You can also change uh, the action key being used to advance things on. So if I want to do space bar instead, I could change that out. Um, we can change the uh, button choices and so on available right here. Uh, and yes, you've got control over how everything looks. And you'll notice also in the preview text, uh, you can use BB code styling and you can also use special effects in it. And you can see there the button advanced. You could change that button out. Uh, where is that? Right here. So the next indicator, you can change that guy out and have a different value right there. Uh, but I don't have any pings and I'm not going to put, actually, yeah, yeah. Let's abuse the hell out of it. I think, uh, so I'm not getting real time preview there, but I think if I go ahead and run this. Yeah. So you see, you can change the icon out that you use for advancement. And yeah, that is heavily abusing the Godot icon. So that is a real quick look at what Dialogic is all about. Now let's head on back over to the website of things. And here we are. So you've got a bit of a walkthrough of how to use it. This is open source, as I mentioned, it's under the MIT source code license. When you export your project out, make sure you add JSON and dot config uh, to the uh, resources for when you're doing your export or it won't work right. Uh, you got some basic walkthrough of the different properties there. Um, so you've got a number of different functions available to you. So like I said, you could uh, get and set variables. Um, and those variables are available in the timeline uh, as we saw doo -doo -doo -doo, in the conversation. So you can set values right here. Uh, and then uh, you can switch between timelines. And that's kind of about it. Uh, that is Dialogic, a really cool project for the Godot engine for doing conversation trees. Uh, yeah, not really much more to say. It's pretty straightforward and hopefully I demonstrated it effectively. Let me know what you think of Dialogic and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.